So what I've got here is an Atari ST. Actually, it's a Mega XDE, but I'm going to show you a quick and easy way how to connect it to a modern TV slash VGA monitor. If you're not familiar with the Atari, you might not know that they have two different output signals for the video. The monochrome output is close enough to VGA that you could just run it off of VGA but the color resolutions, ST high and ST low, are actually something called CGA. And if you look up some information on that, the most important thing about that is the scan rate is actually one half of VGA. CGA scans at 15K kilohertz, and VGA scans at 31.5 kilohertz. So you can't drive a VGA monitor directly from, from CGA output unless the VGA monitor can scan down that low. Most of them can't. Back in the days of CRTs and the NEC multi-sync monitors, they could, but now with all the LCD TVs and LCD monitors, they don't. You could run two different monitors on these things, two different CRT monitors, one for the color, the SC1224, and then one for the monochrome, the SM125, but why would you want to do that? You would have to have two bulky, stinky old monitors that are prone to fail and hard to get replacements for, and at this point, it's really not worth it. Some of the information I'm going to talk about here is relevant for other systems too, like the Amiga, probably, since I don't have one, I'm not too sure, but also for Commodore 8 bits. One of the problems I run into, and I assume most other collectors run into when running older systems like this, is trying to get a relatively modern display on these things. For the same reason I mentioned, you don't want to have a bunch of these old monitors, CRT monitors, sitting around if you don't need to. Now, like I said, this is the Atari Mega STE. The information here will also apply for all the STs, but you don't have to worry about it for the TT or the Falcon, since they can do VGA natively. Now, first, let's turn around the ST, and what you can see is there is the video port. A, it's a single video port and it outputs both the color and the monochrome signals and depending on the wiring of the cable is how it would determine whether or not it's a color or a monochrome monitor attached. It's actually just one signal that's grounded. So if you do uh, Google searches on Atari to VGA or even Commodore to VGA what you'll find is a lot of people talk about these converter boards uh, like this. This is an ACV011, very popular. You can find them on eBay or everywhere, and it's very simple to use. You take your video input here, CGA video input here, and the signals are written on the board so you don't have to worry about what's what, RGB, ground, horizontal sync, vertical sync, as well as composite vertical and horizontal sync. So you wire them up and your output magically appears on the VGA output here. Problem with this is you need to have a second power supply and it just gets to be a pain in the ass. So why would you want to use this if you don't have to? Well, I, I tried to find a monitor or a TV that actually would allow me to do CGA scan rates and they're very hard to find nowadays especially in LCD TVs. Um, it's an older standard and not too many people want to support it. So I got lucky and I found this monitor which I will show you right here. Oops, it just fell. Yeah, set the video camera up here put it back a little bit so you can see this is a Kobe TV it's an older TV and when I say older I mean probably no more than five years old the only way you could tell is because it doesn't have HDMI inputs it's got all the other inputs you could possibly want VGA 
composite component and RF inputs. Uh, but I don't care that it doesn't have HDMI. All I care about is that this VGA input appears to support the CGA scan rates. I'll turn it around and you can see the back of the monitor. And you can't see the model number, but I'll read the model number. It's a Kobe TV. You could probably find these on eBay. They used to sell these things in Kmart or all the other places. But the model is... T Frank Tango Foxtrot Dash TV 1514. And if you look at the video outputs, or I'm sorry, the video inputs, you'll see all the different video inputs that you could possibly want. I've got, of course, VGA here, I've got S video, composite video, audio. These three are the component video. You've also got the RF input. So, that's the TV that you need. You need one other thing, and you can find it on the internet. If you do a Google search for best electronics, they sell a lot of Atari stuff, but they sell this multi sync monitor cable, which has on one end the connector for the Atari. But on the other end, and I'll show you that, has VGA output. And the theory behind the original purpose was you would connect this to your Atari, and then you would connect the VGA, and using this converter board, you could run both of them. But since I found out that this Kobe monitor does support CGA inputs, why bother? So I'm going to show you real fast what that looks like. So let me first turn the Atari around. Plug in the video cable on the one end. I showed you that it has a VGA output and this goes to the Kobe monitor you can see they're male, female, so they may so just connect them together Wally, that's it so I'm going to put the TV here let me set the monitor up so you can see, I'm sorry you can see me in the uh, reflection of the TV and let me turn connect the keyboard cable and the power cable one thing I didn't show you about the best monitor cable is this switch this is wired to the other end of the output of the Atari and when you switch it it changes the signal from monochrome to color I don't know what position it's in now but we'll turn on the Atari and you'll see oh I have to turn on the TV first turn on the Atari <coughs> and I'll come in a little bit closer so you can get a more of a view it's in monochrome mode right now, and you can tell because it's a smaller Atari logo. Skip the memory tests. Let it boot up. And then, there you go. It's in. Nice. Oops. It's in. So preferences, it's an ST high. Can't change it to ST low or ST medium because of the cable. Now, if I want to go to one of the color modes, I take my switch, change the mode, and you'll see that it resets. See this ghosting? I'll take care of that in a moment. But let it boot up. You can 
STC, I mean ST medium. Let's go to ST low. Of course, it'll reboot. It's still going to have the ghosting you saw just a moment ago. That's easy to take care of. But you can also notice how there's a huge gap on the left and it's butted up right against on the right and the same thing on the top it's butted right up to the edge but there's a smaller gap here it doesn't look good and also the ghosting doesn't look good so take the remote control for the Kobe and you go into the menu I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the video but in the menu you flip over to the options screen and you go down to the PC setup that that means it's the VGA input is all that means you press OK and if you press auto set it'll change everything it needs you notice how the ghosting immediately disappeared and well it should have disappeared but it also filled the rest of the screen now I can get rid of the ghosting by messing around with some of these I'll set the clock and the phase to be exactly half. And the ghosting's a little bit better. Doesn't matter, just run through the auto setup, it'll go away. Let's go back to the high res mode, and you'll notice the screen also changes the orientation again. So we go back to high res. And you can notice how it did the same thing. It's immediately on the top and on the right, but there's this huge gap in between. But let's let it finish booting. And you can also, well, you might not be able to see, but there's a lot of strange shading going on here and again you can get rid of that by going into the Kobe menu and going into the option of the setup and do the auto setup and it got rid of the odd shading it didn't really there's still a huge gap on the bottom but on the top it's good enough and if you really really want to get it centered uh, I mean, you can just go and change the vertical positions if you want. I mean, it's okay. And then you can see I'm running in high-res mode. And, of course, I can't go back into SD medium or SD low. That, again, is done by the switch. That ghosting is still showing up. But we'll play around with the settings a little bit more. It's not as bad as it used to be. But also, you'll see how it did change. I didn't change the monitor, all I did was change the mode. And it changed the orientation of the screen. So it's, it's a mild annoyance, but it's a lot easier to do it this way than having to change the actual monitor or having to run uh, multiple monitors. Sometimes it doesn't seem to get the right. You can also change this by hand until you get rid of the ghosting. I'm not really concerned about that right now. Let's see the ghosting seems to be gone. set preferences and now somebody asked me how this works with like games and stuff and I really don't have any games unfortunately um, when I received this it came with a bunch of stuff on a hard drive this is like the original 80 meg SCSI hard drive but it doesn't really seem to have any games I guess whoever owned it before me cleaned it off a bit so I really can't test it but at least I know that it works and I don't need to deal with multiple monitors or I don't need to deal with using this converter card I mean I'll keep this this is useful for whatever else but that's the way it is now there we go
Thank you for looking.